Good morning. So, um, okay, we are today going to go into um, the ePortfolios. So it's the ePortfolio is basically your way of telling your story of a global option. So this is a piece that transcends college. <laughs> so like Fisher College Business, Engineering, Education Human Ecology, all of the colleges that have the global option are going to be using the ePortfolio. But from what I understand, you guys are sort of the first group to use it. So, um, so I, I mentioned this sort of in defense when <laughs> we were having so many troubles um, uploading the, um, the template and that sort of thing. Um, if you've already done that, and I, I think a lot of you have, but not everybody, like I think maybe everybody in class has. But um, so you guys are the pioneers <laughs> making it happen for the university. So, um, but the point of it is, is that we are trying to help you articulate what you've learned um, through this culminating sort of catalog. And in the future, what's going to happen is then the students who enroll <laughs> as a freshman like, will open their template and start filling it in from the very beginning rather than only as part of the capstone course. So for you guys, it might be um, a little harder to, for instance, go back and maybe pull papers or pull from journals or something that you kept um, if you did on your program. But um, I think it'll be helpful for you to sort of see if you can pull in some of those documents or even if you have to go back and sort of recall um, what you had done in the past. Um, so um, let's go ahead and dive in. Um, I'm gonna share my screen here. All right, so this is what it looks like for me. Um, when you guys log in, um, after you've opened it before in the past, you'll go to u.osu.edu. Can we do it now? Yeah, no, like the people here in class and then the people at home, um, if you have access to watch this as well as have it open, um, you know, feel free to go ahead and, and open that up um, so that we can walk through it together. And you can feel free to make some notes um, into it as you go along. So I'm sorry for those of you in the recording. Um, I'm actually pretty excited because we actually got everything to sync today, but you might be seeing more of the side of my face um, than in the past because <laughs> the camera is now to my side since I was able to get it all synced and, and you only use one computer. Okay, so then what you're going to do once you get in here and hit pause if you, you aren't into your site yet. Um, so then you're going to come in here and go to my sites. So you may, you may not need this, but um, in my case, I have a number of my own blogs from past study abroad programs, and then all of you um, made me an instructor on your site. So as I go through here, um, you're gonna start to see like there's Kayla's page um, that I can see, Marina, Abby, um, and then because I had to delete mine and recreate it to create the video, mine is now, okay, so Kayla, you have two pages? Yeah. Yep. Okay, then. <laughs> you made me, yeah. So there's yours, right? So, and then Cody, if you have one. I saw it. You did, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you didn't change it, what I said to, because it, it. So I have two sites, like I have Oh, uh, so you shared, you shared with me your, the wrong one, yeah. So if you go back to your sites and then open the global option one, um, for now, jump into that one, rather than the one you shared with me. <laughs> and then we'll um, send you back through the directions and how to share the other, like the global option one instead. So, no worries, no worries, okay. So this is my page, um, and I mocked it up as if I was a global options student, um, bits and pieces of it. So what I want you guys to do is to be creative um, with it. I want it to become your own as much as we can, um, because then this could potentially be something then that represents you, um, whether it be personally for you to call back upon or whether it be um, a link, you know, in a cover letter or an introductory email or something for a job. Like, um, any of those types of things. So um, I put in just a couple of pictures here. Um, I'll show you how to put in a picture and edit it. Um, but you know, as we go throughout it though, I want you to be sort of intentional in terms of what you choose um, to post. 
um, because when we get this finished and turned in, it's somewhere sort of mid-semester that we then start to take a look at it as a class um, and sort of make comments and that sort of thing for each other. So, um, all right, so the home page um, and what they've done if you've uploaded the template is they have different questions um, for you to fill out. The content on this page is basically automatic. Like this is written in there for you automatically. Um, you can feel free to enhance that. Um, something I did then of course was put in my pictures. Um, so, but I'm not necessarily exactly happy with those. <laughs> Um, like where they are and the captions and and the way that happened but um, basically though to edit this one of the things you're going to be able to do is um, so you just click edit page and then it comes up and it looks a little bit funky um, but to change it you just literally go into the text and start typing like so let's say we wanted to put that like TOSU literally you just type um, into the text um, in terms of putting in pictures, uh, what you do then is um, there's a button up here that says add media. So you're just going to click on that button. And then um, to get pictures into your um, media file um, to support your page, you click upload files and then select files and then wherever your pictures are. So I just randomly picked the first picture. <laughs> guys will probably be a little more discerning. Um, and then it uploads that picture. I'm on Wi-Fi right now, so it's a little bit slow. Okay, so what you wanna do then is, like, we'll change the title of this. So we'll call this like Ecuador 2012 on the bus, <laughs> something like that. And then you caption it. So your captions can be a way of telling a story as well. So, um, so, um, so students learning to um, deal with ambiguity. <laughs> uh, wait, learning tolerance. Students learning tolerance for ambiguity. That's a buzzword. <laughs> that basically means shit happens and you can roll with it. <laughs> but in a much more professional way. <laughs> so, um, all right, you can put in alternative text, which is essentially for, um, you know, people who have disabilities and can't see pictures and, and, and that sort of a thing. So, um, students um, waiting on a bus, okay. So, and then insert in. So that's, it's as simple as that, but if, for instance, you want to change, um, change the picture at all you can you just click on the picture and then this little menu comes up and you can delete it so it's like let's say that's not the best picture ever I didn't realize I had um, you know mascara clear down my cheekbones or something like that until I put it in there you can delete it um, you can also go back in and edit it change your caption maybe misspelled something um, and then you can also use these buttons here. So now I want it, like I say, I want it to be right justified because my other two pictures are left. And then the picture is kind of big relative to the amount of content I have. So I'm going to make it the smallest size I can. Okay, update. And ta-da, there it is. And then what you can do if you want, is like drag it around and um, like wherever the cursor is kind of behind it is where it's going to end up. So this is after the word this, and it shows up there. So you can move it around, whatever you need to do. And then to save that page and the edits that you made to that page, you click update. And voila, you have a new page. If you wanna see what it looks like um, in real life, because for instance, this looks, this is all like, um, it's very narrow, and then it's also in Times New Roman. If you just go back to your pages, um, then that's where it is, and then your title page, oops, nope, like so, ah, sorry guys, um, how do I wanna do this? Go back to, like visit the site, um, and then there you go, so then that's what it looks like. Cool. All right, so these are just the very basic pieces, but, um, so when you go to the About Me, um, this picture, for instance, has a bad border on it, so I might go in and um, try to edit that. 
I also despise this picture of myself, but um, that's, that's beside the point. Um, so, um, but within this, it gives you the headings and then it also gives you a little bit of information. If you go back to the global option template, it will give you some guidance and tips on things to put in there, but um, it does provide a little bit of content just to say, this is what you're going to put in here. If you've already written a bio for yourself somewhere else, you could put it in there, but keep in mind that this is your global option <laughs> e-portfolio. So um, you might want to like tailor a bio that is related to your international activities. So you could put in a goal statement here. Well, actually there's a goal statement for um, the global option heading down there, but um, it could be more like a career goal type statement. It, you know, it should list maybe your major, um, those types of things, maybe just a, a basics about where you've traveled, for instance. Um, and then um, why I decided to pursue the global option. When you came into the global option, you, you wrote something um, in there. If you still have that somehow, um, you know, that might be something that's at least starting <laughs> a starting point to get into it. Um, if you don't have access to that and you want, want it, um, send me an email, newland.7. Um, and I can send you what you wrote into that area um, from the application process. Um, and then also then your goal for the global option. So this is one that you haven't um, necessarily written um, out yourself, but um, and it's a little bit different than why I decided to pursue it. So when you write why you decided to pursue it, keep in mind that you're gonna have to write a separate statement about your goal. Um, but. You know, keeping in mind again that um, everybody in this class has been grandfathered in um, past the beginning point, whereas you know the incoming students um, they'll have had the option to set a goal for themselves from the beginning. So you may need to be a little bit reflective <laughs> to come up with what your goal is. Um, but you know this is really your site. So if you want it to be um, even like a future goal um, in terms of what you would like to do internationally. Um, in terms of fitting it in with the rest of your life, whether that means working internationally, whether it means remain, like, is remaining engaged in some way internationally, um, I don't mind if you do it that way. Um, so just try to tie it back though to say, my goal for the global option is to critically analyze um, my international experiences so that I can parlay those into remaining active on a global scale moving into the future. Um, and so I know like a number of you are ag ed, um, for instance, so maybe that means that um, you want to create international activities for your high school students or uh, from an animal science perspective, maybe that means you want to be able to better serve your clients who are from different cultures or internationally, or maybe you want to, um, as your hobby, incorporate um, sort of service type work um, or mission type work um, using your background and knowledge in another country. Um, so there are all sorts of ways um, that you could use that area to sort of parlay into what your future is, especially since you're so, you're, you're coming into the program sort of at the 11th hour <laughs> in terms of graduating. Cool. So, um, and again, you can just click edit down here um, or um, even up at the top where it says edit page to make that happen. All right. So moving on then to just work our way through, um, culture and language course. Um, some of you may not know exactly like, what you're doing or what you did in order to, to complete each of the four um, components of the global option. Um, the global option capstone, <laughs> this is it. Um, like your, This is your culminating project basically within this class. Um, but for cultures and language, this is one in our college that's a little bit different than the rest of the colleges. Reason being is that our college requires two global classes as part of the gen ed, which not all the colleges require two. They require one. So the way we handle this one is that you either do a second study abroad or you've done a study abroad that requires at least six credit hours um, and you maybe used that to meet both requirements. Um, so, or that you've minored in like international studies or some other international focus um, within that. So for this area, that's where you're going to put down um, something that is a little bit more advanced because within the education abroad um, down here, this is going to be like your intro education abroad. So like if you did Nicaragua as a freshman um, or you've done two study abroads, maybe like your first study abroad, 
um, would be in this area. Okay. So the culture and language for most of you all, um, because we don't have but maybe one or two people who minored in something international to meet this requirement, um, it's probably going to be a second study abroad or the additional courses within a study abroad. So, um, so within this area, that's where you're going to then maybe describe that second study abroad program. Um, and then, like, so the class description, um, you can fill that in there. And then uh, something else it had in the, um, like the parentheses, like this is what you put here. It also mentioned adding in a link to your program information. So if your program still exists at OSU um, and it is um, active on the OIA website, then they recommend putting in a hyperlink there. So just to kind of give you a sense of what that would look like, um, we'll go here and the, the OIA page for study abroad is educationabroad.osu.edu. You go under programs and I was talking about the Czech Republic program, so I'm just gonna put in Czech Republic. Here is that information. So I'm just gonna come up here, control C, um, which is the shortcut for, for copying, um, which is the easiest thing for me to do um, at this point. And then I'm gonna come back in here. I'm gonna edit the page. Da -da -da -da. So what you could do then is highlight this. And then you come up here to the little chain, like the link. You know why it's called a link? Uh -huh. um, in case you guys didn't realize that. A little box opens up, control V, enter. Boom, you have now hyperlinked that content to go back to the university page to, so that you know, if somebody who doesn't know anything about it but wants more specifics or maybe it's um, an incoming student into the global option and they're looking at some of their options and so they look through um, some of the past students and, and look up their pages, for instance, um, you know, it might give them that sort of an idea. And then again, hit update. Boom. So within that description for the course and such, um, what you might do, um, like recommend posting a journal entry or something similar here. So if you typed up a journal, it's gonna be super easy. Um, if it's written, you know, maybe typing that in. You don't have to share anything like, super personal that like, you know, it's going to really make you vulnerable and put you out there. Um, but um, if it's something that you feel is really um, interesting, well written and shows a lot of critical thinking and analysis um, about your experience, that, that tends to be something quite valuable to put into that space. Okay, all right. Okay, so now we're gonna go back visit my site again. So when we go in here and take a look then at that course, um, ta-da. Yep, and so it takes us to that program page for OIA. Oops, all right. So something else then to point out here is that I made this caption super long. Um, you can decide whether or not you like the look of that in terms of format um, and whether or not you want that to be that long. Um, but yeah, and I just put in some easy pictures to kind of drag and drop quickly. Um, and I didn't have that many pictures on my actual computer um, of the program. So um, these were the ones I ended up just like dropping in really quickly. So don't look at the, my pictures in terms of looking at it as a specific example of exactly what we're looking for to put in. Um, pictures that I think really tell stories are um, maybe more candid. Um, and I know it's sometimes hard to have those of yourself because <laughs> maybe somebody else would have had to have taken those. But whatever you might have that, um, whether it be with like a host family or um, you, know, you handed the camera to somebody else to take a picture, um, maybe it's not of you, but it still tells a story or, or something, um, that, that's okay um, as well. But um, like, so action pictures tend to tell more stories um, than sort of stationary pictures. All right, when you go into the actual education abroad program, um, it gets a little bit more specific in terms of providing an outline um, for you to consider and walk through. So again, like the program overview, um, so giving just sort of the, the basic description of what the program was meant to do. Um, if the program is still on the OIA webpage, you can maybe lift some information from that. Um, 
if it's a human animal interactions, um, the description of it doesn't change except for like fine change, like New Zealand to Spain and then Spain to Ireland <laughs> and so on in terms of space. Um, the learning outcomes are still the same. If you have the syllabus, that might be also be a place where you could find some information, um, pulling that out of the learning outcomes, for instance, um, for the course and to put that in there. If you studied abroad twice, um, I would put your first one under Ed Abroad and then your second one under Culture and Language Course. Because that's kind of the way our college, for the most part, is sort of shaking out, is that um, students' culture and language course is actually like a second study abroad. Because it's more common in our college to do two study abroad programs um, than other colleges. Um, so that's why, like, so we've accepted that into that space rather than taking, because some colleges that don't require two global studies classes, it's like students take an additional global studies course. Um, beyond what was required for the gen ed, but we're already required to take two. So our academic committee that put this together um, basically decided that it needed to be like a minor um, or a second study abroad. So if I haven't gone to Tobago, but the, the prereq courses that I took in there? Yeah. Like the set up and the part one and two. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then, you know, if you want to continue using this beyond the course, yeah. <laughs> then of course, then you can um, uh, update it for whatever use you might have for the site. Okay. Yeah, but for now, it's fine. Just use your pre-departure. So whatever makes sense, especially I think um, some of my ag ed students in particular who are taking this class as a junior, um, you may not have done your second program or something like that. So whatever makes sense in terms of your best judgment for this, this course to make it happen. So, all right, so pre-departure reflection, though, like you could. <laughs> Um, do a pre-departure reflection like sort of and that is where you're sort of thinking about um, you know what are you excited to learn about what are your expectations um, you know and, and this is something that you may or may not have done and, and have captured from a previous study abroad but if you did you've made it easy on yourself if you haven't then um, you could sort of try to reflect back upon what you thought before going on the program um, so, you know, just like talking about nervousness or apprehensions or, um, you know, we've talked before in a lot of the pre-departure classes about sort of the, um, the there's like a, a chart that is used to describe um, emotion before you travel. So, um, I'll be right back, guys. <laughs> so, so um, I'm going to try to do this so they can see it as well. But um, so when you travel, okay, so this is you leaving, right? So in terms of this is the x-axis is time and the y-axis is positivity or negativity of emotion. <laughs> so before you leave, it's sort of like you get super excited, you're applying to the program, you're, you know, trying to figure out like, you know, is this going to be the one I'm going to get in, that sort of a thing. So it's up and then you might be like, what the heck am I getting myself into? Oh, and then like, I was so excited to go. And then um, I'm going to miss out on all of these things like FOMO, <laughs> like being back home um, and that sort of thing. And then you like, you know, you get excited and then you go and you're super excited. Everything is super novel. But for preflection, you know, what you are like for the pre-program preparation, it's sort of you might address these sort of feelings and what made you nervous and what made you excited in advance of going, if, if you're able to remember that level. So, but then just kind of continue on with this. Um, when you get in country, everything is novel and new, you get super excited. Um, you know, it's, you're, let's say like, you're someplace where they have accents when they, you know, they speak in English and you're like, oh, that's so cool. And, um, you know, like, oh, look at this food. It's amazing. It's so much fun to eat this. And, whatever else, you know, like first getting to Ghana, like, oh, look at this, like beans and rice, it's so exciting. And then, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so then after having that same meal or dealing with that accent for a long time, the novelty sort of starts to wear off. You know, like, um, and then you might even get a little bit homesick at a certain point. Now, this model was designed more for people who go longer term, like for a year or something, and this might be spread out. But there is also research that says, even if you're only going for like two weeks or a month or something, this does happen. It's just not as extreme, um, and it happens much more quickly. So, um, and like on a short-term program, it might even just be like, 
I'm not going out tonight. Like, I'm just going to stay in my room. I'm going to like, or um, I'm not, I, I'm going to go to McDonald's. I just need like a, a Diet Coke with ice. <laughs> like, if you're in Europe, that's possible. Like, gone and not so much. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, and on the Brazil program, it's across the street from the hotel. There's literally like a McDonald's and a Burger King. Um, and then a subway next door. So, um, but it's funny because it's not a six inch sub. I forget exactly what it is. It's like a certain number of centimeters sub. Yeah. But it's, it's different. Yeah. So, um, but you can still get your sweet onion chicken teriyaki when you're craving. <laughs> like, about that fifth week. <laughs> okay. So, um, so the novelty wears off. Maybe you can get a little bit homesick, but then you kind of spring back. And honestly, they say that you really haven't started engaging into the culture until you've taken off these like rose colored glasses that are tempered by um, the novelty and excitement of being there. Um, and you really don't start understanding the culture until you see it through realistic lens, um, which is going to be more like when your emotions are at this balance point. So, and then when you come home, you know, it's sort of like, yay, ranch dressing, ice, air conditioning. And then, I miss being back home and then you balance it out or I miss not being back home but I miss being in country and I'm gonna miss all those friends so that's sort of that scale so when you think about the study abroad if you don't have anything already written you might think through this process and how it happens and how you dealt with that and how you encounter that in country I also want you to get a little bit academic though <laughs> um, so not just talking all about your feelings um, but some of the things that you learned um, the novel pieces if you had some aha moments for instance um, I, I just recently had an aha moment I think I was talking to maybe Mary Rodriguez about the Nicaragua program and for instance um, how it's really sort of complicated there because um, there's this movement about like eating local there, which you know we sort of have in the US as well, but theirs is much different because they import in so much of their staple foods. So there, it's sort of like, you know, we eat so much rice and we can grow rice here, but we export our rice and import <laughs> rice from like the US, like from Louisiana, like why is that? Um, and the reason being is that um, they can, like, the farmers can make so much more money off of selling like their specialty rice into export type, mar type markets. And you can't live off of rice alone, you also need some cash <laughs> to pay for some other things. So they're sort of forced into this model of selling their goods in order to make a, a, a living, but then having to buy those goods back, <laughs> maybe from like the person who's willing to grow it in country or buy it at a larger like discount grocery store where you can get a 50 pound bag of Louisiana rice. Um, so, or, or Chinese rice, I mean, depending on the country. Um, so it's just this really interesting dynamic. And so for me, it was sort of like yet another sort of aha moment in understanding the global economics in a developing country. Um, and the pressure that you know, the United States puts on by having um, this demand um, for it. So it's really kind of interesting because then you start thinking about like, this demand for um, like maybe fair trade grown rice, <laughs> which means then that these people <laughs> are growing rice specifically for the United States, exporting it, but then so that they can afford to buy Chinese rice. And it just is this really fascinating sort of cycle that starts to develop. So that might, like, so that's an example, like if you had sort of an experience like that, that, that you really then started to realize something that, um, you know, maybe you hadn't before. That, that is like something that, that is, is probably going to color or shape the way that you understand the world moving forward. Those aren't always easy to recognize, but if you can do it, put that in there. So, so a reflection of how you felt while you were abroad. Um, and that can be uh, most programs require journals, not all, but so um, you might have that information to put back in and then reflection upon return. Um, and that you're upon return now. So even if you don't have it, um, that might be something you could put in there. Now, within these areas as well, um, what you might do, um, you could use, for instance, um, within this or your culture and language course um, or um, the global course within your major, like any of these where you think it might fit. Some of the things that you've been writing for class, um, like in particular the CQI stuff, what you could do is add that in, for instance, to the culture and language course. Um, because that is something that sort of was meant to help you understand your own personal values and culture, um, as well as your, like your drive, 
knowledge, strategy, and motivation um, in there. So that might be content you could put in there. Um, the other piece then as well, um, telling your story of like whatever you put in terms of the video that you posted. Um, not everybody posted one that I might, you know, like post for the world to see just in terms of, you know, like sitting on your bed and dim light and, you know, whatever else it might be. Um, but if you, like that, that was really good content for a lot of people. So that might even be a piece of media that you could upload to whichever section makes the most sense for whatever you addressed. So, um, all right, so final project in reflection. Um, this class, just so you have a sense of where it falls, um, for instance, engineering students, they're all required to take an engineering capstone course. So that is a final project in which they design something, um, potentially implement it. Um, there's a number of different things that they can do as part of that, but they are required to take an international capstone course. So for instance, um, some mechanical engineering students, we have the program in Tanzania for ENR in this college, but at the same time, along with them travels mechanical engineering capstone students. So those students have taken a class for a full year with Michael Hagenberger, who is their resident director for their part of the program, where they've been exploring and studying the issues in this village um, in Tanzania. And then when they go, they actually then help implement a project. Um, so the one they did this past year, um, they built a water catchment system that was connected to essentially like the medical office in town um, because there was no access to water. People had to walk. Um, you know, five miles kind of each direction sort of a thing to get to water. And if a woman came in like in labor, um, somebody either had to leave at that moment to go get her water or she had to have like been collecting, you know, back collecting and, and bring, you bring your own because there was no water available at the clinic. Um, or you had to pay a lot of money <laughs> to get sterile water out of like storage. So what they did, like rainwater is pretty pure there. Like they don't have a lot of I mean, it's kind of coming off of Mount Kilimanjaro region. It's in the Kilimanjaro region, actually. Um, so they built a big tank where they can collect the water, um, is what they did. So they put spouting up on the clinic, and it drains then into this big tank, um, and then they use the water in the medical clinic. So, um, so that's an example of like an engineering international capstone project. But they had to do everything from assessing how much rainfall, what time of year, um, they had to build like a user's guide to say, this is how you clean it. This is how you ensure it's clean. Um, never dump river water into the rainwater cat, like, you know, like a, a user's guide for that. Um, and then like they gave a, a manual to the people then in terms of how to build it as well, um, which they learned a lot about culture because they pretty much just threw it away. Um, and for the sake of development, you never build it yourself. You hire local builders and local experts to do it. So, um, so it was a really interesting project for them. We don't have those types of things in this college, so that's why we have this course. So, um, but within this course, then you're going to have that final project um, that you're going to do that's going to then synthesize all of these different experiences that you've had. So, within this final project um, slash reflection, um, you could also put some of your CQI stuff in there and then some of the other pieces of class. So you might end up posting a paper, um, you might end up posting your PowerPoint, you might end up posting multiple papers, um, your video. Um, so you could use this in whichever way you want in terms of capturing the class assignments there. So, and then there is the global course within your major. So this is from that list of courses that was within the, um, the global option guide. So animal sciences, they have a couple global classes. Um, it could have been pre-departure, um, for instance, for South Africa, that course. Um, so then your question, I guess, becomes sort of void in terms of posting that within your ed abroad. So, but you can still sort of do pre-flexion for the ed abroad um, page and, and just leave the rest sort of to be filled in after yeah. <laughs> or something along those lines. Um, so for some people, though, this was... Um, your second study abroad as well. So what happened in terms of the way we counted people for the um, global option is that if you did, you can only use one study abroad for two categories. So for instance, Brazil students had 12 total credit hours, but they couldn't use that to meet everything except the capstone class. So, um, so if you didn't take an on-campus class, but you did it through study abroad, like you had one study abroad that was six credit hours and one that was three, 
um, the one, like one, like the three credit hour one would then potentially be your class within your major. And we also allow it to be a class within a minor in this college. So that's the course where you would write about that. So you're gonna write in a description of that course and then a class reflection. So what I put in here, <laughs> I created a fictional class <laughs> within Ag Ed that is international in nature. <laughs> it doesn't exist, <laughs> but um, I made it up because I think it would be really cool to have that class. It's a little bit like Dr. Gungan's development communication class, but, um, but I think it'd be really cool, even if it's just one credit hour, to have one that sort of talks about the global scope of agricultural education. And that was the field that I came out of. So I was kind of vacillating between, like, I'm the global option director and these are my goals, <laughs> to like, oh, if I were a student, what classes would I have used? Um, so I kind of vacillated depending on where I was within that. So, and again, it's just like the other sections in terms of inserting a picture, in terms of um, putting in your captions, putting in the writing and those types of things. So, um, and again, you can put in whatever type of media you would like. So if, for instance, in a class, your final project was some sort of a video or a PowerPoint, that sort of a thing, write in the descriptions and your reflection of what you learn, but then potentially attach in that file as well. So the, the intent of this is that then, um, when we're doing some assessment in the future of the impact of the global option, we might be able to come back through these um, portfolios and say these are you know some of the things the students have learned you know critically analyzing what do we need to improve um, how is it going to work for students who come into this actually as freshmen as we intended versus those who came in as a senior um, and sort of they had just by happenstance happened to meet all those credits so does that make sense you guys feel like you have a good grasp on the the e-portfolio now okay cool so um in terms of then taking a look at when things are due, um, we're gonna go into the Carmen page. And I did upload a new syllabus again this morning that just sort of changed it from like just telling your story to e-portfolio telling your story. Um, da -da -da, secondary login, okay. So, Let's go in here and, and take a look at the syllabus just to make sure everybody knows exactly what's going on and then we'll be ready to go. So, all right, da, 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 da. so many things. Okay, so, and I am getting to your discussions and your, your papers, I promise. I was at a retreat all weekend, but my dissertation is now 86 pages long. So, so I apologize, I did end up having to prioritize that temporarily. Yeah, I know, right? So, um, all right, so da da da. Uh, so, the discussion post, was we supposed to put that under discussions, also assignments? Because I noticed there was one post. Oh. Zero, oh, psh. I noticed that today when I went to go grade some. Okay. <laughs> Wherever you I put it. Okay. Wherever you put it, I found it. Okay. Sorry, guys. Oh, no worries. But I, I yeah, so I, I got in there and um, I, I did see them both. or wherever you put it because I was confused at first I was like oh, only 10 people posted and then I went to assign like I went to grades mm -hmm. to grade it then and um, it was like oh. <laughs> some people like I can click on this little button and open their paper so I apologize but hopefully you guys know by now like I'm not picky like I'm not I'm not rigid in terms of what I do, and I must apologize if you are, um, but I will give you guys all the benefit of the doubt every time. So whatever it takes to do it. Okay, so um, e-portfolio detailed explanation, um, telling your story of a global option essentially um, uh, is there, but then when I think I have it posted um, uh, to be due, it's a little bit later in class, um, so it needs to be completed by April 10th. So it's closer to the end of the semester than the middle, like I, I had initially thought. So, um, so you have some opportunities to, um, to work on that over time. But I did want to bring it up early just because especially with you guys being coming into this as basically a, a student wrapping it up, um, you haven't had the luxury of years mm -hmm. to, to add bits and pieces along the way. So 
But talking then about just sort of moving forward and what's going to be next, um, this next class is going to be um, online only. So um, Florian Diekman and I will be recording it in the library um, to show you sort of one of the things that ends up happening is that finding resources that are international and being able to gauge whether or not they are um, legitimate stories, for instance. Um, there's a lot of good content out there from NGOs, um, for instance, non-government organizations that do development work. However, you have to sort of take that with a grain of salt because if it's an NGO um, that is based on the premise that um, all development work should be done in an organic way, um, that is certainly a perspective and it's a valid perspective, um, but it might be biased in terms of um, the way that it reviews um, material and puts it together and synthesizes that. Um, so because there's a, the alternative side is, um, but conventional will keep people from starving to death <laughs> because you can be much more um, efficient with land production and, and those types of things. So it's like longevity, like so quality versus quantity um, is what it really boils down to in terms of that argument, like quality of maintaining the environment versus quantity of food and feeding people. Um, and based on the values, that it may sway um, what they're going to prioritize, for instance. So, um, so Florian and I are going to um, walk you through how to use the library resources and then how to evaluate um, what would be a, a useful um, citation, for instance. Um, and then um, for February 13th, um, Dr. Erba is going to be coming in. He's the college's director of international programs in agriculture. Um, so he's the one who, for instance, um, got the $25 million grant from USAID to do a lot of work in Tanzania, like to increase the capacity and improve um, Sokoyeni University, which is the Ohio State University of Tanzania. Um, so he will be flying back in like three days before that or something. <laughs> so he'll be in class um, to present that day. But then um, in that class, then on the 13th, um, we are going to then um, I'm not sure if I'll put it in a discussion board, but in some way I'll have you guys um, provide a topic of what you want your final project to be about. And just a reminder, the final project is sort of a paper and um, what I assume most students will present like a PowerPoint or a Prezi or put together sort of an iMovie um, walking through a PowerPoint, um, sort of a thing that you'll then post um, for public viewing. So, so it's a combination of a paper and a project, and that represents that paper. Um, so, pardon? What type, of topic? what type of topic is that? So the topics are going to range um, pretty broadly, um, because what it's going to be is it's going to be a synthesis of your international experiences. So, for instance, um, Brittany, remind me, your two programs are going to be South Africa and, and Spain. And Spain. Human, okay, so kind of a... A synthesizing topic might be human and animal interactions <laughs> um, on a global scale, something like that. So um, you won't have participated in the South Africa program quite yet at that point, um, but um, you can probably project through the pre-departure class some of the things that you'll be talking about. And so, um, you know, if for instance, in both of those classes, you talked about, um, let's say, you know, in Spain, you know, you, maybe you talked about like bullfighting um, and, and that the cultural implications of that um, and how it came to be something that is unique to that culture because other cultures don't do bullfighting. Yeah, we went to a ring and a breeding farm and everything. We went to a ring and a breeding, breeding farm. So, um, and then at the same time, um, my screen sharing is paused. Sorry, guys. Uh, okay. Sorry if you're on the other end and you're not seeing um, my screen and just my face. Um, so, uh, okay, I'm going to stop the share. So it's just my face. Okay, so, um, so you did bullfighting and then another thing you're probably going to study in South Africa, for instance, you know, bovines. And I know like you're going to go to a dairy farm and talk about the impact of then like um, related species like water buffalo, that sort of like Cape buffalo, um, 
and the, like the spread of disease and that sort of a thing. So what you, this is really drilling down, um, you wouldn't have to get this specific, um, but you might then talk about like a comparison of people's attitudes about the bovine species okay. between the two. Um, so, and you know, it might be a little bit different because like Kayla, I know you're doing like Brazil and Ghana, <laughs> like two completely different cultures. So yours might actually be more of a contrast paper and you might pick a specific topic um, where from your pre-departure course, you've gained enough information at the point that you're doing your project um, or through looking up literature, you can then start to assess um, some specific topic um, where you're doing a con contrasting work. Mm -hmm. So, and then the same with you, Cody, and like Honduras and Ghana. I think the MRI might be like service science and development. Mm -hmm. it's very similar between both of the experiences. Like yeah. Service so, service learning and community development in terms of like being able to hear. Um, yeah, uh, that might be a topic that you compare and okay. contrast. Um, so, but what I would want you to do as well is not just base it on the US perspective of it, but find something that then also draws upon you talking about the cultures of both countries um, to fit that in um, to the global option. So not just like, this is the way the faculty handled it, like in compare, like compare and contrast, but this is then how maybe it was received within the culture. These were the types of things that were expectations or needs, um, that sort of level. Cool. So that give you guys a sense of what's next and what's up. Okay. All right. So we are going to wrap it up here and um, I will see you guys on Valentine's Day Eve. Yeah. So, all right. Well, go Bucks, everybody, and we'll talk to you soon.